for this part. We type some loose ends, and we note some facts about representations that didn't arise naturally in the previous parts. For the next part, we'll shift gears to representations on function spaces. Now, for here, we consider this as the exercise section. So I'll state everything as an exercise. Now recall, we're working with G of finite group. We're going to consider finite dimensional representations over the complex numbers. So first exercise, if I have L1 and L2 equivalences, we want to also show that L1 inverse and the composition of L2 with L1 are also equivalences. Then, once we have that, we're going to define an equivalence relation between representations. I'll say that pi and pi prime are equivalent if we can find equivalence between them. So, we're going to show that this is an equivalence relation. Then, we want to repeat all that with an equivalence relation on unitary representations and unitary equivalences. Okay, so just remember for a unitary equivalence, once we find our equivalence L, we'll want that to preserve the inner products. So it's going to carry one to the other. Now, we can apply equivalence of irreducibles to the question of full reducibility. That is, every representation can be decomposed to a direct sum of irreducible sub-representations. The question is, how unique is that decomposition? Now, we start with a definition. So if we fix an irreducible representation, sigma u, okay, I'll say that pi v has type sigma if there exists an equivalence between pi and sigma. Now, for full reducibility, say I have a general representation, pi v, let's suppose I have two decompositions. So the first one will be decomposed in terms of irreducible v's. Second one will be decomposed in terms of irreducible w's. So the question is, Okay, how do I reconcile these two decompositions? So, first part, if we have all the v sub i's in equivalent, show that we have the same number of irreducibles in each decomposition, and each v sub i is equal to some w sub j. Now, if that's not the case, I'll define v upper sigma as the span of all sub-representations that are of type sigma. So we collect all those together, then take their span. Next, I want to show that the orthogonal complement of V upper sigma is a sub-representation, and that it has no sub-representation of type sigma. With that, we want to show that I can decompose V as a direct sum of the V upper sigmas, where these sigmas are going to range over a set of inequivalent irreducible representations. So this is going to give us our uniqueness result. Now, with that, okay, the number of V sub i's of type sigma is going to be equal to the number of W sub l's of type sigma. It's equal to the dimension of the space of intertwining operators from sigma to pi. Next, we can characterize irreducible representations using Schur's lemma. Here's another way. So we start with a definition. So I'm going to choose any subset S inside of our vector space V. We'll define the G span of S, or the span of S under G, as it's going to be the subspace spanned by all pi G of S, where G ranges over the elements in the group, S ranges over all elements in S. Exercise show that this span is a sub-representation of V. This is going to be the small sub-representation containing S in V. Or we could think of that as the intersection of all sub-representations that contain S. Then, I want to show that pi is irreducible if and only if the span of any single non-zero vector is all of our vector space. So that's another way to characterize irreducibility. Finally, I want to show 
any irreducible representation of g is finite dimensional. So we could do that just using this definition of span. Next, okay, exercise. This is just applying Schur's lemma. If I have pi and pi prime in equivalent irreducible representations, okay, I want to show that the space of intertwining operators is equal to zero. Okay, so that's straight from Schur's lemma. Then I want to apply that to show that any invariant sesquilinear pairing of V and V prime must be zero. Next, another application of Schur's lemma. We assume pi v is irreducible. We want to show the dimension of the space of intertwining operators from vn to vm is equal to m times n. Recall, vm is just a direct sum of v with itself m times. Now, this problem is just the analog of counting the dimensions for a linear transformation space. So if we consider linear transformations from cn to cm, if I fix a basis, then each linear transformation can be associated with an m by n matrix over the complex numbers. We count, we get dimension mn. Next, we have some problems involving tensor products. So this problem is going to be useful for a result later on. We start with pi v unitary, and we'll consider the dual space on v. So that's the space of all linear functionals. Okay, recall a linear functional, it's just a linear transformation from V into the complex numbers. Now, because our representation is unitary, there's an invariant Hermitian inner product on V, so I can represent each linear functional in this form. So F sub V on W is equal to the inner product of W with V. Now, with this definition here, show that this form on the dual space is an invariant Hermitian inner product. Once we have that, I want to consider the tensor product of the dual space for V with V itself. So on monomials, I want to define a form of so, and then we can extend that linearly to all the tensor space. So the problem is, just verify that this gives an invariant Hermitian inner product on our tensor. Once we have that, we note this tensor product is equivalent to space of linear transformations from V to itself as representations of G. So show how we get the invariant Hermitian inner product on here to the invariant Hermitian inner product on here. Next, some work with concrete tensors. So our group is S3, symmetric group on three letters. A representation, I have pi v2. This is going to be a sub-representation of the permutation representation of S3 on C3. So v2 is just going to be the subspace of C3 given by the vectors whose coordinates sum to 0. For a basis, we'll take v1 and v2. Okay, these are not going to form an orthonormal basis. For convenience, I'll define v3 as follows. We'll consider the tensor product of V2 with itself. So this is going to give us a representation with four dimensions. We want to decompose this representation into its irreducibles. Do that as follows. So first, consider the span of the vector V1 tensor V2 minus V2 tensor V1. We'll show that's a sub-representation equivalent to the sine representation. Then, same idea, consider the span of the sum of VI tensor with VI. We'll show that's a sub-representation equivalent to the trivial representation. Then, we'll have the span of these two vectors here. So V1 tensor V1 minus V2 tensor V2. V2 tensor V2 minus V3 tensor V3. We'll show that's a sub-representation equivalent to pi V2. So we have 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. So that should be everything. So for the last part, I want to show that sub-representations in A, B, and C are mutually orthogonal with respect to the invariant Hermitian inner product on the tensor space. 